What's going on guys? I totally forgot to record that intro when I was doing the video, so here I am the day after. Today we're gonna be building a, um, an application that takes in your phone camera. Let me just show you right, right about here, we've got it running. And as you can tell right here, it's using my phone camera and it's working in all the angles. So if I just rotate it like this, it also going to fit. If I rotate it this way, also going to fit. Now you get a picture, of course. So we have this application right here. You're gonna be using your back camera in this case. You can also use the front camera. It is up to you. So that is what we're gonna be doing today, guys. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. We're gonna start by creating a new script. Let's call it phone camera in this case. And we're going to be opening it up inside of Model Develop right here. Now this one is quite a big script to write. So let's start right away with some Boolean cam available. So this is going to let you know whether your phone is able to run the camera or not. And then we're gonna be creating a webcam texture. That's where the, um, the webcam is going to be displayed. Your phone camera is gonna be displayed. In my case, I'll call this back camera because I wanna be using the back camera of my phone. Now you could have uh, another one for front camera as well if you wanted to. And finally, I'll be using a private texture default background so I can actually revert to the default background if something goes wrong. Then after that, we are going to be using the raw image component to display our image. With the new Unity UI system, it is way better to be using a raw image in this case. Once we have our raw image, let's go ahead and declare a public aspect ratio filter. Now, none of these seem to work right now because we did not include the namespace. So let me just highlight this, press on control dot and do using unity engine.ui. At this point, raw image lights up and also the aspect ratio filter lights up as well. Okay, so we've got all the feel we need to make this work. Let's go ahead and start laying down our start function. In the start function, the first thing I'll do before anything else is I'll make sure I set my default background to the background.texture, the current one we have at the moment on our raw image. So whatever is on our raw image in the scene view, is going to be our fallback background. So you just set it through the inspector here. And then once this is completed, we're gonna start looking for camera devices on our device. The way we do this is by creating an array, webcam device array, call it devices, is equal to webcam texture dot devices. Now webcam texture is actually the, uh, the type here. So it's gonna be looking for whatever is on the phone right now. Now if devices dot length, is equal to zero, it means that we do not have any camera at this point. So let's do a debug.log, no camera detected, or write some kind of message in here that is going to let you know that you're unable to run this uh, script. So no camera detected. And then we're gonna do cam available is of course equal to false, and let's return so we don't actually go any further. Now in case there is at least one camera detected, we are still going to run through a for loop. The reason is you might want to have the back camera, you might want to have the front camera, or if you have like a weird device with three different cameras, then you want to be choosing which one uh, you'll be using. Now inside of this, there is quite a few components you can be looking for. So if you just have a look right here, say devices at the index i, you have is front facing and also name, which is going to help you choose which one you want. In my case, since I want the back camera, I will do it if device is not front facing, so not dot front facing, I'll be using that one. So I'll say back cam, which is my webcam texture, is equal to a new webcam texture, and then you're gonna be giving it um, some parameters to get it started. The parameter it takes is the device name, actually. Now remember, we do have the device name if we say device at the index i dot name. You could be booting your camera only with this, but I'll give it some additional parameters such as the request width and also request height. So my request width is gonna be the whole screen, screen.width, and my height is gonna be the whole height of the screen, so screen.height. This way we now have our back camera um, stored in memory. But at this point, we still did not play it. So if we just go a little bit further here, if back cam is equal equal to null, it means that it was not able to actually find a back facing camera in this case. So we're simply going to say return because we don't want to go any further. We can also add a debug.log saying unable to find back camera in this case. If you're using the front camera, of course you change your message 
accordingly. Now you went through all of this, so you do have at least one camera, you do have at least one back camera, that back camera isn't null, then you're gonna say it's time to actually get it playing. So backcam.play. And only by doing this, you're gonna have your camera actually being used by the software, and then at this point, you can start rendering what the camera see. The way you render this is by actually setting the texture of your raw image to your backcam, um, to your backcam object, because backcam is a webcam texture and it inherits from texture, so it can actually be used as a normal texture. So let's do background dot texture is equal to backcam, just like this. And now you're gonna have your you're gonna have your camera displayed on your raw image. Let's also make sure that cam available is equal to true because we're gonna need to update something every single frame. So that is pretty much it for the setting up. We are going to close this and head over to our private void update function. There is something we need to do every single frame and that is because Unity is a little bit bad with camera. It's not the best. It um, actually takes a while before uh, information is sent to the camera. So you can't actually just set the, the background size and set all of that information. You cannot really set the background size at the very same moment you enable the camera because Unity has this delay of one or two, three frames before it actually kicks in the actual good values you want. So you need to do this every single frame. Plus, since you're doing it every single frame, then it means that when you actually orient your phone in a different way, it is going to update. So that's pretty cool as well. So in my private void update, let's start by looking at our cam. So is our cam available? If it is not, let's simply return because we're not, we're not updating anything that exists right now. So let's just not update it. Uh, and then we're going to start declaring a ratio. You're going to need a ratio and that ratio is going to be something like float cam.width. Oops, not cam available, back cam.width divided by float back cam dot height. This is going to give you a ratio that we'll be using in our um, aspect fitter. Now it is really important that you cast those as float even though they don't highlight it right here and they say that the cast is redundant. It's actually not. You need to cast them as float else you're going to be losing a little bit of precision and you can't afford that in a aspect ratio. Now we'll be using our fit which is our aspect ratio fitter and set the aspect ratio to our ratio we've just calculated right here. The next thing we want to do is actually set the scale Y of our object, of our raw image. And we get this by saying back cam, and then we get the video vertically mirrored. Now if it is actually on a mirrored side vertically, we want to say it's going to be equal to minus one. And if it's not, we want to be making this equal to one. So let me just fix my ternary operator right here. This is how you do it. Now, once you have that information, let's set it right away. We're going to say background dot rec transform dot local scale is equal to a new vector three. And we're going to say one F, then the scale we just calculated. So it's either one or minus one, depending on which uh, orientation it is. And a one at the end. And now if it is mirrored, then it's simply going to swap on the Y axis by having a negative scale. So we have a proper ratio right now, we have a proper scale. What we need at this point is a proper angle. And we're going to declare, and we're going to declare a int right here, int orient is equal to minus backcam dot video rotation angle because they give it to you already. So you don't really need to do anything else than just uh, put it in your parameters. All you gotta be saying at this point is background rec transform. And then you do local Euler angles is going to equal to a new vector three of zero, zero, and then the orientation. And just like this, you've got yourself a working camera. Uh, now, of course, to test this out, you actually need to have a camera. Um, <clears throat> now, of course, to check this out, Quinn. Now, of course, to test it out, you actually need to have a camera. So what we're gonna do is set up the scene right here so we can actually build it to our phone and have a look how it actually interacts on the actual phone. So if I head over here, I create a new UI, raw image, just like we talked about. Let's rename this one background. Now, here it is right now. It's not taking the whole canvas. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is actually set on stretching, both axis, so the one right here, and put all the parameters on zero. This way it takes the whole screen. We then need to add a aspect ratio fitter because we're using it in our code and change the aspect mode to fit in parent. 
then at this point, all we need to do is actually um, set up our references. Let me just save the scene really quickly. And if we head over to our camera, we add our phone camera script. We can now drag and drop the background right in this field and drag and drop the background again because it's the one that contains the aspect ratio in the aspect ratio field. Finally, we're going to head over to build settings, player settings. Actually, make sure you swap to Android or iOS first. And then head over to the bundle identifier. In my case, I'll be using cum and 3K. And let's do phone camera in this case. And I really can't type today, sorry about that. Then we're going to hit build and run and actually wait until this is built to our device. So I will swap over to the other camera so you guys can see. And it's actually built on my device right now. The first thing you're gonna be seeing is it requests permission because it needs to access the camera. So definitely you're gonna to need to give it some permission. Let's hit allow. And then if we wait a bit, we get the uh, Made in UT logo. And then afterward, you will get this in your actual game. So if I swap over to this side, as you can tell, it does fit the whole well, it doesn't fit the whole screen right now, but as you can tell, at least it fits the proper orientation. So we can just be playing around with that. And we've got the back camera running right now. This is my really dirty room. We're using two keyboard because I really can't deal with the, um, I really don't like the Razer one. It has some stupid keys at the end here. Anyways, anyway, let's just go ahead and fix the fact that it's not taking the whole screen. So if we just go back to the desktop real quick, we need to go back on our canvas. I forgot to do something. We are going to set the UV we are going to set the canvas scaler to scale with screen size. We can also be choosing the biggest resolution. That's what I like to do. So in this case, we're going to have, say, a landscape game, 1280 by 800. Let's do 1280 by 800 right here. Back on the background, I'm going to set my aspect ratio back to none. So here are the actual settings I want. I want to be setting this on none for the moment. And then just make sure I reset everything back to 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to do envelope parent. That's the one I got wrong. It's not fit in parent. It's actually envelope parent. Then we're going to build again. So control and B in this case. And now let's have a look at the phone right here. And as you can tell, it's actually looking quite good. If I swap over to this side, it also works. Let me just put the camera as well so you guys can see in real life. And here it is. So that's the phone. As you can tell on the right orientation, if I swap over to landscape, it's also going to swap over to landscape in the right orientation again. And I'm covering all of them right now. So you can see that's my arm. It's actually shutting down. <laughs> Sorry about that. And here you go. It actually does everything in the right orientation. Now guys, that is pretty much it. So that's pretty much all we needed to get our background camera running. Uh, you can also do that with a front camera. You just have to change the if statement. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, if it helped you, just leave me a like, really appreciate that. And also uh, make sure you check out the other tutorial we have. Tomorrow we're gonna have a tutorial about markless um, AR using what we've done in the week. So you gotta know how to build on the phone, you gotta know how to use the gyroscope, and you also have to integrate the back camera in there as well. So using all of these, we're gonna be able to do markless augmented reality, which is gonna be quite cool. Um, other than that, if you don't know how to build to your phone just yet, if you wanted to make this tutorial but you don't know how to build to your phone, make sure you click on this video right here. We also have the other video, which should be right about here, um, about the gyroscope. So all the information you need for tomorrow are right here. Just make sure you click on it, leave a like, subscribe, and you know all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.